Hi, and welcome to another 3CX Core Flow Designer video. In this video, we are going to show you some of the true capabilities of the 3CX Core Flow Designer. We are going to show you how you can create a telephone ordering system to allow people to order products via the phone. Before we get started, let's have a look at some of the prerequisites of this project. We will assume that there is a CRM which has the customer's details stored and is accessible. We will use that to check if a caller is an existing customer. So that will be our first component, checking if a caller is a contact or not. A component has been created from the Project Explorer to check the caller's status. We will perform a CRM lookup using the 3CX lookup component. The CRM connection details are handled by the PBX and we do not need to do anything else in the call flow. We will perform the search based on the caller ID number coming into the call flow and see if it matches an existing contact. The response mappings allow us to retrieve information about the caller from our CRM. Moving on, we will create a condition where we will check if a contact has been found based on the calling number. If the contact is found, we will assign the variables to be used by the call flow using the assign a variable component. We will set the contact's name, which is a concatenation of the contact's first name and last name, which we retrieved from our CRM. We will then assign a second variable to show that the contact has been found. If a contact has not been found, we will assign a variable to show that the contact has not been found. We will assign it a value of false. Going back to our main call flow, we will add this new component to the call flow, allowing us to use the information further down. We will add a condition component to indicate how to process the call if a contact is found or not. When a contact is not found based on the number, it will be just sent to an agent or operator. However, if a contact is found, the caller is presented with three options. They could either be transferred to a sales agent or operator, or they can place an automated order or even check up on the status of an existing order. Pressing zero to transfer to the operator will take them directly to the queue or operator extension. This is up to you to configure wherever you want the destination to be. Pressing 1 starts the automated ordering process. You will notice we have two components in this call flow. The first is for the user authentication. A PIN number will be asked from the caller to authenticate their account before starting the ordering process. The second component is the actual ordering process. So let's take it one step at a time. Let's authenticate the caller. We will use an authentication component to ask for the caller's PIN. In this example, it will be six digits. If a caller does not enter a six digit PIN, it will ask them again another two times and will then go to the invalid input call flow to transfer them to the operator. If the PIN is a six digit number, we will verify this against our database to verify the record with the contact number has the matching PIN number. If it is a valid six digit PIN number, we will use the valid pin flow and define it as validated. After playing a message, we will then send the call to the end of the flow where it will then take the caller's order. If the pin number is a six digit pin, which does not match the caller's account, then it will give the caller three options. Pressing zero will take them to an agent or operator to manually verify the account and to take an order. Pressing one will ask them to retry. This will set the pin entered as invalidated and go to the beginning of this component to re-ask for the pin number. Pressing two will cancel the flow and drop the call. If nothing is pressed at this point or they enter any other option, it will transfer them to the operator or an agent. And now we are ready to start taking their order. Using the database search component, we will create a database entry. We will then assign an order ID which was given to us from the database. This will be used as the reference number for the order. Now we go to ask the caller for the items they want to order. We will use a loop so we have the opportunity to ask the customer to complete or continue the order after each item. We will ask the caller for the item ID. If it is not a six digit number, this will then be sent to the invalid input to ask for the number again. If it is a valid six digit ID number, it will then be identified as valid input and the item details will be checked in the database. If it is not a valid item ID, it will ask for a valid ID. If the item is valid, but not in stock, we will give the caller the option to get notified when the item is in stock. This notification request goes into the database. So when this item does become available, the staff will be notified to let the customer know the item has been restocked. Otherwise, the call will go on to the next item. If the item is in stock, we will set the item details and verify with the caller which item they have chosen. They will also have the opportunity to select the quantity they require, where a check is done if the items are in stock to sustain the quantity selected. 
If a valid item is in stock and there is enough stock to fulfill the order, the quantity will be set. Insufficient stock will ask the caller to re-enter the quantity based on the maximum stock available. If the caller selects zero as the quantity, the item will be cancelled. Otherwise, the call will continue and this item will be added to the order. When the item and the quantity are confirmed, the order is updated in the database and the total cost is updated. After each item, the caller has the option to cancel the order, to add more items, or complete the order. Cancelling the order will void the order in the database and drop the call. Continuing the order will go to the beginning of this loop to start the whole ordering process again for a new item. Finishing the order will start the checkout process. Checking out will check if there are items in the order. If not, the call will end after cancelling the order. If there are items in the order, it will be set as ready and will check if the customer has an email address defined in their account. If an email is not defined, then the order summary will be read back to the customer and the call ends. If an email address is present in the customer's record, we will go through a sequence of events which will allow us to create an email with the customer's order and send it to them via email. Now, after an order is placed, we usually have anxiety about the order and its status. Has it been prepared? Has it been shipped? Where is it? We can verify the status of the order with the customer through our main call flow. The caller is asked for their six digit order reference number. If the caller enters a number in an invalid format, for example, a four digit number instead of six, the call will then be transferred to an agent or operator for manual processing. If a valid order number is entered, then the order status will be retrieved from the database and this will be played back to the customer. If it is an invalid order number, then the call will exit the flow and go to the operator or queue agent. We hope you enjoyed our short overview of what you can do with 3CX and the call flow designer. The source code for this project can be found on the 3CX GitHub page, which we will link to in the description.